Before we get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you don't miss any of the content that is released by Go Collect. And if you're interested, head over to Reggie Collects here on YouTube. Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector and the host of the Go Collect weekly speculation recap video. I've actually received a ton of messages from people over the last couple of weeks congratulating me on the success of the show. And I want to thank everyone out there that has been watching the show over these last couple of weeks. One of the questions that people have been asking me is what day can we expect the video to drop? We are on track to release this video every single week on Wednesday. And so you can definitely stay tuned to this channel, Go Collect, to actually see the video when it gets released. And I wanna definitely thank you all for subscribing to the channel and also turning on notifications. That way you don't actually miss anything. So this week, we are going to dig into six blog posts that have been submitted into Go Collect by bloggers. And these blog posts range the gamut in terms of their topics. But as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm only going to touch on some of the high points, so I definitely want to encourage you to take the time to read these blog posts in their entirety. And all of them are actually linked in the description of this video. In this first blog post written by Norman, he asks a very provocative question as to whether there's any money to be made in cracking slabs. And in this blog post, he takes a look at a signature series, Green Lantern 85, signed by Neil Adams that he is thinking about having cracked. And what he does is he basically examines this book and he points out to you, the reader, what it is that he actually looks for and why he thinks it might be worthwhile to actually have this book cracked, cleaned, graded, and re-slabbed. And it's actually a pretty provocative kind of discussion because this is something that people are discussing all the time. Whether they should buy old CGC labels, have them cracked, clean, press, et cetera, et cetera. And Norman actually proposes that there is some money to be made if you know what you're doing. And in his introduction, he actually points out that this is maybe a skill that is best left to the experts. But at the end of the day, you'll read this article and you'll decide whether to crack it or not. Spider-Woman has been all the rage for the last couple of weeks. And there are several reasons for that, including some activities that have been undertaken by Sony over the last couple of weeks and months. I think a lot of people by this point actually know that Sony owns the rights to Spider-Man. But what I don't know if people appreciate is the fact that Sony actually owns the entire Spider-Man universe, which includes more than 900 characters, including Spider-Woman. And so there have been lots of hints over time that Spider-Woman might actually be appearing in a movie at some point in time. And so in this particular article written by Matt Tuck entitled, Sony's Spider-Woman Movie Spurs the Market for Marvel Spotlight Number 32, he actually takes a look at not just Marvel Spotlight Number 32, but a couple of other books associated with Spider-Woman that you might wanna check out. Now, when we talk about Marvel Spotlight number 32, this is actually the first appearance of Spider-Woman. And what's interesting about this uh, particular book is that Marvel actually did this book so as to prevent them from losing the rights to the character. But the thing is, is that she was actually a pretty big hit, which is why they actually brought her back in Marvel 2 and 1 number 30. But because her origin story wasn't the greatest, because in her first appearance, she actually evolved from a spider. So a spider became a woman, not the best origin story. So in her second appearance, Marv Wolfman actually retconned her origin and it, 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 it evolved around some false memories that were actually planted by Hydra, a, a much more plausible origin story. But in the case of her first appearance, you can actually pick up a graded book 
9.0 or less for about 150 bucks, which is actually not a bad deal. When you look at her second appearance, the Marvel 2-in-1 number 30, this book also isn't too bad. You can actually get a 9.8 for less than $200, and if you don't want to spend that much, you can actually pick up a 9.6 for under $100. The next book that is pointed out in this particular article is one that I actually own, and it's Spider-Woman number 70. And so in the 70s, Spider-Woman had actually picked up a lot of fans, and so they decided to actually give her her own title, which ran for about 50 issues. And again, this is a pretty nice book, but you can actually get a graded copy of this particular book, which has a 90-day FMV of around 200 bucks, or you can go for a 9.6 for about $78, which again, isn't a bad deal. So there you have it. Those are three books that you might want to consider taking a look at associated with Spider-Woman if you feel that there's some potential there. In this next blog post from Matt Tuck, he basically asked the question as to whether now is the time to actually pick up some books associated with Adam Warlock. If you guys remember, back in like 2018, early 2019, Adam Warlock was all the rage. People thought that he was going to make an immediate, immediate appearance in an MCU movie. But some things have happened with James Gunn and the Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and et cetera, et cetera. And so as a result of those plans being delayed, prices and values for Adam Warlock's various appearances have actually hit a little bit of a lull. And so Matt asked the question as to whether now is the time to buy. And in this blog post, he actually takes a look at three different awesome books associated with Adam Warlock that you might want to consider. The first book is Fantastic Four number 67. And he points out here, that for the past 90 days, prices have actually been falling for virtually every grade of this book. Specifically, a 9.2 actually has a 90-day average of $865, and this is compared to its 2018 FMV of $1,065. So that book has definitely cooled off, and again, now might be the time for you to take a look at Fantastic Four number 67. The next book, Mighty Thor 165. And Matt actually points out that while this book doesn't have the same values as Fantastic Four 67, it might actually be the hotter of the two books in the sense that the values for Mighty Thor haven't decreased as dramatically as the values for Fantastic Four 67. In other words, this book has actually maintained some of its value. And he points out here that for the past three months, most grades have actually lost value compared to 2019 averages. But he says that a graded 4.5 last year averaged about $143. And as of late, it's been carrying a 90 day FMV of $124. The very last book that Matt actually points out in this particular article is Marvel Premiere number one, the only book that I actually don't own from this list. And uh, he says that with this particular book, based upon the 90 day averages, you can add anything up to a graded 6.5 for close to $100. And so again, even with this particular book, prices are not out of the range and none of these books are terribly crazy expensive. But here's the thing. If Adam Warlock makes an appearance in an MCU movie, all three of these books could see a really nice rebound and return in the very near future. This next blog post comes from Ariel, who is a subscriber of my channel. And if you watch last week's recap video, you probably heard me talk about his other blog post, which highlighted some books that had some historical significance associated with African-Americans. And so Ariel has another blog post this week that essentially does the same thing. In this one, he highlights 10 additional comics that have some historical significance. And I'm only going to touch on a couple of the books in this particular clip. So you might want to check out the link in the description so that you can read this blog post in its entirety 
and check out some of the books because there are going to be some books that you've probably never heard of before. Now, that's not the case for the very first book that I'm going to mention, which is Luke Cage Hero for Hire number one. This book was released in 1972. It is the first appearance and the origin of the man known as Luke Cage. This is actually a really, really cool book that I had the pleasure of giving away on my channel at the time. I had not read it. Then I read it and then I regretted the fact that I had given the book away as part of the Go Collect giveaway every single week that I do on my channel. But that that is neither here nor there. It is a really cool book that you might want to check out and maybe even add to your collection. The very next book that we want to talk about is Teen Titans number 48 from 1977. This book is the first appearance of Karen, also known as Bumblebee. And she is the first DC female black superhero. And you might be asking yourself, didn't she appear in Teen Titans 45? She did, but she wasn't in costume in that particular issue. And so Teen Titans 48, she has a name and she's also in costume. Now this next character that I want to talk about, this next book is like all the rage and, and, and people are really excited about the possibility of seeing this character come to the big screen and it is none other than Captain Marvel Monica Rambeau who joined the Avengers in Avengers number 227 released in 1983. Now if you're interested her first appearance is actually an amazing Spider-Man annual number 16 a book that I own and absolutely love. So again, in this article, Ariel talks about several other books. I want to encourage you to check out the link in the description so that you can check out all of the other books that he actually highlights. This next blog post entitled Just the Facsimiles, Please is actually a pretty interesting article. And in my opinion, it's a little bit of a cautionary note. And this blogger actually talks about how we as buyers and speculators need to take some time to pump our brakes. And we need to take some time, especially when we're digging through the long boxes and think that we're finding deals, to take the time to really ask ourselves whether the book that we are thinking about buying is really the real deal. And he specifically takes a look at a couple of comics, looking at original comics compared to facsimile comics. And, and for those of you that don't know, a facsimile is an essentially a recreation of the original comic down to the advertisements. And sometimes it's a little easy to mistake a facsimile for the real deal. And if you're digging in long boxes or you're on eBay, you could very easily make this mistake. And in fact, I've actually seen it on eBay a couple of times where there is a facsimile comic that is being sold and maybe not fully disclosed that it's a facsimile comic and the prices start to go up on this particular book because people aren't paying attention to the fine details. And so this blogger takes some time to look at a couple of specific examples of some books, original versus facsimile, and just gives us some cautionary notes that we might want to pay attention to. Link is in the description. I encourage you to check this one out. So here we are at the last blog post for this particular video. And this is actually a pretty good one, this, this blog post. It, it actually asks the question of whether we are missing the boat, specifically on Tales to Astonish. And, and the title of this one is Tales to Astonish, Underrated Silver Age Classics. And the blogger is basically asking the question of whether we are missing the boat on the significance of this particular title, whether we're just overlooking it as we look for all of these other really great Silver Age books out there. And the blogger points out a couple of issues that we might want to take a look at. And the first one that caught my attention was the first appearance of the Black Knight. And I'm not necessarily talking about the one that you might be thinking of, the one associated with Cersei that might make an appearance in an upcoming Eternals movie. I'm talking about the second Black Knight, Nathan Garrett, who made his appearance in Tales to Astonish. And this is actually a, a really cool book that you, again, you might want to think about taking a look at. High grade copies of this book 
are, are relatively within reach, right? The most recent CGC 9.2 actually sold for less than $600, while the top grades, a 9.4 actually recently sold for around $1,300. And $20. The next book that the blogger points out is Tales to Astonish number 77. And what's really cool about this book is that this is where Rick Jones actually makes it known that the Hulk's secret identity is Bruce Banner. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't know that. I did not know that that was the significance of this particular issue. So I thought that this one is, this is really cool. And so again, this is Tales to Astonish number 77, Hulk's identity revealed to be Bruce Banner. And the blogger points out that there were only 109 universal copies that are on the CGC census. They point out here that a CGC 9.2 sold less than six months ago for $340, which isn't a bad deal. If you're a Hulk fan, if you're a Silver Age fan, if you're a, a Black Knight fan, these might be a couple of books that you want to take a look at. So there you have it. That is essentially the end of this week's weekly recap video. If you enjoyed the content, I definitely want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button, and leave a comment behind so that we can mix it up in the comment section. Take care.